Hello folks. I almost slipped about five times just walking here because it snowed a little bit and now it's all ice over here. But anyway, today I'm going after the Pac-Man Nebula and I consider this really just a bonus nebula because really I was capturing it while I waited for the spider and tadpole to come into view. So I, I spent about uh, maybe five and a half hours of getting data on it so far and I'm hoping for at least a couple hours of oxygen so I can finish it off because I think that might be all the time I get tonight. It's supposed to get cloudy later. And uh, uh, this this target, uh, it's a bright one. It reminds me of the, the Wizard Nebula. They're both about the same size, about the same brightness. And I thought I did pretty good with seven hours on the Wizard. So I think I'll just probably finish somewhere around seven hours or eight hours on Pac-Man. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's cold right now, so I'm going to head inside. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so I've only got one rig set up, and that's because I'm not expecting the clear skies to last very long, and I didn't want to set up two rigs for nothing. And it's my Rasa, and um, there's the, the moon is starting to come back, but it's, it looks a lot more bright in this picture than it really is. I, I don't know. It's, it's not very illuminated today, so I'm actually doing oxygen with the with the rasa and i was looking at the satellite and um i'm right here on the map and you can see there's a lot of junk coming for me soon so i'm hoping to have at least three hours of imaging tonight but i don't think i'm going to get that lucky we'll see but anyway let's look at my um let's look at sequence generator pro really quick here Okay, so I just turned my lamp on off to the right to give myself a little bit more lighting. That I noticed the first recording was kind of dark. But um, I wanted to show you something in Facebook first. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the APOD Sky page. And this page in Facebook is actually run by one of the guys that also runs NASA APOD. So if you actually see your picture end up on this page... Uh, maybe you got a 20%, 30% chance that it also might become a NASA APOD. Uh, it doesn't have to be on this page. My elephant trunk went straight to APOD before um, without landing up on this page. But if you do see it on this page, that's still a good sign. And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I noticed uh, one of my pictures is on here. And it's the one I, I just finished before this. It's the... Uh, the spider and the tadpole. So I'm like, yay! Uh, the NASA APOD is NASA Astronomy Picture of the Day, and uh, that's kind of like, in my view, one of the most coveted awards you can get. You don't actually get an award. It's more like a, maybe you get a little bit of status if you can actually get an APOD. And so I, I was happy to see my own page, my, my own picture on this page. That means I'm, I might be in the running for another NASA APOD. You never know. If I don't hear anything in a few weeks, uh, it might, I would say probably all hope is lost, but it's still nice to see that uh, I might be considered for another one. So anyway, I'll keep my fingers crossed. So here is Sequence Generator Pro. Um, the, the mean readout, I got an early start today, and so the mean readout was over 2,000, but it's falling nicely as the sun sets even more down to 1,300, 1,394. I think it might end up hopefully around um, 1,100. That's the range I like to be on for all three um, of my narrowband filters, and I am going to go for the Hubble palette um, again, like I just did with the spider and the tadpole. That's my, that's my favorite way to process and it helps a lot with the light pollution that uh, I have around here. And let's see, um, I've, I've, so far I've got three hours finished of um, HA. I have two, uh, two and a half hours finished of sulfur. And now I'm doing um, one minute. Uh, those were sulfur and um, HA were both done at gain 75, two minute exposures. And I'm doing oxygen at gain 75, one minute exposure, just because it has... Um, uh, less light pollution protection, so I'm keeping the uh, the exposure down to one minute and gain 75 offset 15. Um, the um, there is my HFR. That's the focus. How pinpoint your stars are, and 
Um, to this day, like I, I always say, I, I've never lost focus on the Rasa. I said it once manually at the beginning of the night, and um, it lasts all night. Um, Meridian flips, um, automatic Meridian flips have no impact on focus at all. The only thing I've ever seen affect focus, of course, are seeing conditions, but it will usually snap back down, um, and, and I'll get a better HFR when the seeing conditions are proved. So that's, you don't really need to try and adjust your focus for that. The, the focus usually returns to where it should be. But the, uh, and I, and rolling my, my telescope in for the night and rolling it back out on the next clear night, um, that, that the vibrations of me rolling the scope in and out um, does cause it to lose focus. And that's why I still focus once at the beginning of the night or when I switch um, filters. Other than that, I'm amazed. It never lost focus. Even my refractors would have lost focus by now. And uh, let's zoom in. Let's take a look at those stars. Yeah, they look pretty pinpoint. I can't complain about that. But um, I do see a slight halo on the big star over here on the, the left. Um, I don't know. I, I'm getting diffraction spikes. I didn't use that little um, that little cable router I have yet, that circular that will get rid of my diffraction spikes. So I, I got to stop being lazy and just put that thing on there. I see a slight halo with oxygen. And um, uh, people always ask me, what, what do I do about um, halos? Do I get halos? And uh, with every filter I've ever used, I get halos. And the way I handle halos is, this is, people aren't going to like this answer, I just don't capture objects that have bright stars around them. Because <laughs> I don't want to deal with them. Uh, there's a lot of information out on the web on how to deal with halos. Uh, I could probably take my pick and learn how to uh, process them. Um, I just don't bother. I just don't want to, uh, you know, I guess it's just laziness on my part. And But the thing is, when you have um, a wide field scope like this, big bright stars are going to sneak into the picture. But you know what? You know how I'm going to handle this one? I'm going to crop it out. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you're looking for an answer from me. But I'm sure there's other people that can really show you how to deal with them. And I'll probably have to look it up one day myself. Maybe this would be a good object to practice on. But I think I'll just crop it off right about there. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy to see, though, that um, there's a lot of data showing up in, with oxygen for in a single sub with one minute. So, so this is the guiding and my tote RMS, well, 0.41, but of course I just cleared it. Let's, let's see how this goes for a bit. And I've got my, my two counterweights hanging off of the end of the rod. I did, um, uh, a third counterweight did arrive so I can scoot them up. I don't like them hanging off the end and, uh, maybe that'll improve my guiding. Although my guiding is more than good enough to give me those round pinpoint stars that I'm getting with this scope. So I'm all, not really all that concerned about it. And it sure looks good right now at 0 0.57, 0 0.61. 0.59. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, folks, that's all I got, and I will see you later.